Um, so gumbo is our unsafe word. So what that means is if we say gumbo, uh, we're gonna fuck some shit up. Gumbo is our murder hobo button, basically. And jumbo gumbo means murder. Welcome back to Trick and D&D. &D. This is the recap for session four. So the session begins the morning after the incident. Uh, Drugar and Harry have slept perfectly through the night, but Latruda, not so much. Uh, so what are you guys going to do? Okay, well, uh, if you want to go talk to some people, I'll, I'll go do some shopping, you know? I'll gather supplies and things as well. Drugar decides that he wants to talk to a couple people before they leave, and so Latruda takes it upon themselves to go do the shopping while Harry tags along with Drugar. I can go, uh, I mean, I'll go talk to Gavin just to see how he's doing. I think I want to see the herbalist too, just to be like, hey, listen. Um, because... I'll probably just tag along with Drugar. The duo starts off talking with Gavin. Very easy, like, yeah, he's busy. he's kind of like sitting there with like a bowl of oatmeal, just like staring off into space, like eating it. So uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll kind of like pat him on the back and then sit down with him and just be like, heck of a night. Yeah, you could say that. Oh, you're, you're leaving? Yeah, that's the intention. Uh, we've, we've kind of, we came for the escort to, we, we escorted Taruna back to her place and all this hubbub's a little bit too much for us to be on, too much excitement. So we figured we'd be kind of be on our way and. Well, I guess that makes sense. I, I'm surprised they haven't asked you to stick around for, like, questioning and stuff about what happened. And then they head off to Valyria as their second stop to chat with. Uh, during this, Latruda has gone shopping, picked up a wagon, two mules, uh, rations and water for the trip, as well as a map. Can I get the map tattooed on my back so we'll never be without it? No, but I am going to show you guys the map. <laughs> map reading. So I'm probably going to change this up a little bit. Latruda decides that they would also like to pick up some teas and herbs, and so they decide to head towards a Valeria's shop as well. I'm going to have you all do a perception check. So we got a, a 15, a 9, and a 22. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to say Latruda, you did nothing. No, nothing, you got nothing. Um, which is also unfortunate because you're like alone. So um, the other two though have noticed that there's somebody following you. Drugar and Harry get there first. They have a nice little chat with Valeria. Drugar catching her up on. Oh hi Valeria. Hi. Uh, how's it going? Uh, did you Good. figure out the stuff? Did you get my letter? We did. Thank you for the letter first and foremost. <clears throat> I'll let you know that. Uh... Everything's okay. Everything's put to rest. Sure. Uh, well, she, she'll say, you know, like, I really appreciate you, like, updating me. Um, mm -hmm. This really, uh, like, I feel really bad about what happened, but I'm glad that you could figure out more of what happened there. Um, and then she'll be like, yeah, like, feel free to take a look around. Let me know if you need any help. He looks, he takes a look at some of the wares. Um, pretty much any type of, like, medical type of herbs. So, like, basically, uh, like, uh, versions of, like, calamine and polysporin and, like, stuff like that, but, yeah. like, herbal. Uh, and then Latruda shows up. No. Bonjour! <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Did you uh, pick up any teas, uh, Druga? Nope. He was, like, kind of short. Nope. I'm... None. I don't know about you guys, but I, I like a bit of oomph, no? Want to splash? Yep. Yeah. Drugar stays I like silent. Little, I like a little oomph. Drugar is not going to respond. He's, at that point, he's going to give him a wish of uh, Valeria a nice see you later and then go outside. Okay. Do, um, <clears throat> is he acting funny? Yeah, no, totally. Yeah. He's, okay. He's, he's not just me. He's got his knickers in a bunch. I'm not sure. Before Latruda's done shopping, Drugar leaves. Uh, Latruda and Harry finish up their shopping and then join Drugar outside. There is not much more to get. I think we are saying goodbye now. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I do hope to hear from you. I'm um, going to dive in and give by, a, give a big hug. Yeah, she, she'll definitely let that. You, you like feel her like she's like a little bit awkward. About, oh my gosh, I'm sorry. Um, She's like a little bit awkward about it, but she's definitely like reciprocating the hug. She's just like not used to like these like shows of affection kind of thing. When Drugar walked outside, however, there were people waiting for them. Uh, So when Drugar leaves, there um are two guards standing outside. Are they are they like 
they're they're like standing and like you you can like sense that they were kind of waiting for you uh Durgar will approach him gents hi um looks like you guys were like gathering stuff to leave yeah well i mean we were thinking of departing relatively soon um is there a reason we shouldn't well, you were originally asked to stick around for that trial. Obviously, the trial's not happening anymore, but we'd still like to question you about what happened last night. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, yeah, we just kind of assumed since what happened last night that we wouldn't need to stick around for the trial anymore, so we were packing up and ready to go. But, I mean, uh, I, I spoke with Gavin earlier today, and he was willing to give my statement for us because we were looking to kind of leave before the, the sun before we lose out on sunlight. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I I think probably we won't keep you around too long. Um, but being that there is that chunk of time where Gavin wasn't with the prisoner, um, I feel like we should probably talk to your party members about that. I'm going to come outside, but I am going to hobble and wobble. And um, if you don't mind, Harry, I'm going to put a hand on you for like some support. Uh I'm going to be frail as fuck. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, like I said, it's not going to take too long. I mean, unless we find out you guys did something. Um, it's not <laughs> going to take too long, you know? Uh, sure. Yes, um, the questioning is fine. Um, I have the wagon now, so I suppose we'll ride it down to the barracks. Are, are they got on the wagon with us? Or are we just gonna meet them there? The I don't. Guards? No. Yeah. Fun. So I don't. I don't think that <laughs> the the mules would be able to pull that much weight. No, let yeah. them on the wagon. Um, even if they could. <laughs> so they're dumbass guards, um, yeah. and they they have just like let you go, expecting you to go back. Cool. Okay. Uh, so you guys can decide whether or not you're actually doing that. This is probably gonna be a, a group decision, actually. Uh, what, Probably, what, yeah. What, I'm going to get out of earshot. Shall we go hmm. to the questioning, or shall we mm. carry on? I'm, I'm going to shoot you straight. Mules do not run very fast, so... Uh, no. They're, oh, true. They're we'll, I, we'll, I, be I caught, we'll be caught pretty quickly if they want to catch us or not. So, if we want to do... I can so make maybe... it difficult for them to catch up, so... Sorry? Yeah, I can also make it difficult for them to catch up. Sure. Yeah. It's really never, hard never, to... We can never come back yeah. here. It's really hard to catch someone if you're on fire. Mm, that's the thing. I I enjoyed the people here. I yeah. Should should we do the like go then and just like see if we can clear our names then so we can come I, back if we want. Hypothetically, if we go and it goes wrong, what's our ed exit strategy? On their way to get questioned, they have a quick chat about getting their stories straight, and a little bit of a deep chat between Latruda and Drugar happens as well. It's not the dishonesty I'm worried about. It's the manipulation. You manipulated me during that time to get get things done when you could have just been honest and I would have done it anyway. You would have done it if I was yeah. honest to you. Drugar's a G. You're 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 the captain. You, I I follow orders and I understand you have mm -hmm. reasons for it. But just like when Harry, you know, un, in, unbeknownst to him, he did it unintentionally messed up my brain. You did it intentionally, and that bothers me. You know that is a that is a very good point. I did not see it that way. I just overcome by the fury of uh, you know how it is when you get so mad that nothing is clear anymore. Well, that's I I understand that, but we've been through thick and thin together. You should have known I would have had your back regardless. Okay, I will make it up to you. I'm sure you will. So are we? Oh, are we saying that a, a third assailant came in and attacked you both? Uh, yes. Um, okay. I was attacked. Um, I blacked out. Um, sneak attack from behind. Some rogue type, I believe. Mm -hmm. So they ride their wagon over to uh, the barracks and they get questioned. Um, <laughs> yeah. So you guys, like, when you get there, like, they they already like they recognize you. They know why you're there. So they're going to like immediately like split you up, take you into like different rooms um and question you and and basically they're they're just gonna ask you like recount what happened last night from the time that um you like dropped off uh 
the prisoner to the time that you guys left to go back to your room at the barracks. And the something caught fire, not involving me. And so I yelled. Okay, now, now deception. And <laughs> there was a burnt sausage at the crime scene. I yelled. I, I yelled. There was a fire, and so I, uh, yeah, and then I dealt with the fire. There might have been a roguish fellow. <laughs> 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 um okay i got a 21 for deception oh fuck i forgot we're all gonna be having to do this so uh... um so oh, you okay. sorry you got a 22 for deception about the fire not having to do anything with you uh um, 21 21 but yeah i don't i don't think it matters it didn't but... matter i rolled a five um <laughs> 21 okay that yeah, that mostly damage, checks but... out um you did get yeah. one Detail incorrect, though. Oh, yeah? Yeah, something like, oh, like in the corner caught fire. I don't know. There was like a little, like, a shadowy thing or something. I don't know. I was out of the corner of my eye. I was very focused on my sausage, but like, <laughs> I like, I heard like a whoosh, and then I looked over and there was a fire. Uh, yeah. Like a whoosh. <laughs> <laughs> That's really important. That's <laughs> crucial <laughs> to this story. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna like super overplay the tiredness and like have droopy eyelids and stuff. I'm gonna go into lots of detail about each bit. Is there was something um, missing to me? I don't know. None of the pieces sort of uh, fell into place. Um, and then there was a lot of commotion. It seemed there was a fire. Uh, and um, Gavin uh, ran to go and put out the fire. He should have. He, he did exactly what he should have done. I am. Um, uh, about 25% wood, so I am not very good at uh, putting out fires. <laughs> I went into his cell, and I um, may have got in his face more than I should have, but next thing I know, there was a sort of a whoosh noise. Um, I got uh, stabbed in the shoulder, and there was a, a loud crack behind me, so... And the next thing I awoke, uh, the, uh, Gavin was over the top of um, the, uh, the Lord holding his throat. It looks like his throat had been slit with something. Drugar ran in, Gavin ran away, and um, Drugar was unable to keep the Lord alive. He had lost too much blood, maybe? I, I'm not entirely sure. So, once we dropped off the assailant or the the prisoner um we i was on first watch with gavin i then went to get a couple of drinks unfortunately overindulged but then i uh, i think i was making a bit of a ruckus unfortunately due to my intoxication and then there was a fire so during the fire uh you know i tried to do my best to help put out the flames Although, while I was putting out the flames, I definitely saw whoosh out of the corner of my eye of something running into the prisoner's whoosh. area. I then followed in and saw that my, uh, my compatriot, Latruda, was on the, on the ground, uh, unconscious with a wound in their, in their chest, and Gavin holding the throat of the, the prisoner. Um, not sure what happened or anything like that. I do have some medical experience, so I told uh, Gavin to go get the get the medic as I was trying to uh, stabilize the the person since I didn't know where any of the clerical or or medic folk people are in this in the in the area. And unfortunately, during that time, uh, the the blood loss was quite significant, and I wasn't able to stabilize the prisoner. So the questioner is going to walk back into Harry's room and he's going to say, so your story mostly matches up with everyone else. I feel, feel like you're, there's that, that one detail that's really bugging me. Well, see, I can't tell you, I need you to remember better <laughs> because I'm having trouble believing the rest of your story. I gotta be honest, I've been like, I've, I've been plane shifted a few times. Another no, plane but you, you said then... that you've been plane shifted, like, like to the Fey <sighs> plane? 
uh yeah i've been there and yeah no i've been yeah and then here and this is like all brand new to me there's been a lot to remember being in like like everything is like brand new i do so... remember though whoosh. <laughs> Yeah, see that that's a detail that like seemed to like crop up everywhere. Okay. No. Yeah. Um knowing that you've been to the Fey Plane a couple of times, um I, I actually like I know some other people um who have been shifted back and forth and their memory isn't so good. I think it is something to do with that plane. So yeah, they're they're just gonna let you go. They they believe you, they know that you're not like from the city and that you were planning on moving on soon. Uh they manage to uh explain what happened without giving anything away. They make it away with their lies and continue on their journey, heading back up to the north gate and leaving the city. Alright, so to the to the north gate, you guys can find your cart, your donkeys are just there kinda like gnomon on some like ground vegetation. Um Fox's standing as, guard. As promised, I, I give them the fattest, juiciest carrots they have ever seen. Oh, and they'll, they'll happily chomp them. Hey, thanks for checking out Chicken D&D. If you liked what you saw, click all the buttons down below. Subscribe, like, comment, you know the drill. Um, also, it'd be really cool if you came and checked us out live at Chicken D93 on Twitch, where you get to participate in the conversation or watch us play D&D on campaign days. Uh, thank you again so much. See you next time. Bye.